What's up, everyone? This is potentially the first of a few videos in a mini series that I'm going to create. And here's what it's going to be all about. It's all about the men's final from the World Championships that just concluded last week. This first video is going to be a high level overview of the different tactics. And I'm going to dive into a couple of nuances that came out from this match. Now, if you guys like this and you guys want to see part two, part three, maybe even part four, breaking down some of the subtleties of the match, please leave a comment and let me know. It's just going to give me the encouragement to create those for you, knowing that you want it. For those of you who watched it, you know that this was an epic match. Ali Farag, Mohamed Al Sharbagi, world number one, world number two, both former world champions. Like it was the ultimate finale to the world championships. Now, I'm going to start off by showing you what the scoreline looked like and begin talking about some of the high level themes. And then from there, we're going to jump into the details. So there's a scoreline. You see it on your screen. 3-1 for Ali Farag, 68 minutes. Hard first two games. Game one was 17 minutes. And even though Ali Farag lost that match, he put a lot of work into Mohamed Shorbagi. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And then the second match was 24 minutes. And this was a physically brutal match. And from there, you can see the next match was only the next game was only 12 minutes. And the final game was 10 minutes with the score lines moving increasingly in favor of Ali Farag. To be honest, this score line reminds me a little bit of Jahangir Khan's score lines, where Jahangir Khan in the past, he was super fit and he would he, he would be OK even if he lost the first game. But he would make that first game so long and hard that in the second, third, and if there was a fourth, the score lines would gradually go from like a 9-7 in the first, let's say if Jahangir won, to a 9-5, and then a 9-1 or a 9-love because he was so physically commanding and powerful. And in a sense, Ali Farah kind of did that in this match, which is shocking because Mohamed Sharbagi is the beast. Now, there was one thing. I don't know if you got a chance to watch my preview video for the World Champs, but one of the things that I had noted in there was actually Mohamed El Shrabagi's fitness. And the only reason I mentioned that is because of the previous World Tour finals that Shrabagi played against, the match against Mustafa Asal in the final. That was the first time I've ever seen Shrabagi gassed. And the reason for that is because Mustafa Asal, again, was playing at a very fast pace, high tempo, picking up all the balls and getting on the volley. So speeding up the game for Shrabagi. And that was the first time he's ever been that fatigued. So in my mind, I knew that if there was a chance of Ali Farag to win, and truthfully, I was anticipating Mohamed Al Shrabagi to win because leading up to the final, his play was immaculate. Just hitting all his targets, volleying, controlling the tee, playing multiple patterns, showing different shots from the same position, just very, very, very sound game. And he never showed any physical distress. But that's the difference between the next tier of players and Mohamed Al Shrabagi and Ali Farag and Mustafa Asal's like right in there, to be honest, because not none of the other players that Sharbagi played could physically push him that hard. None of them were hitting as accurately. None of them were getting on the volley as much. None of them were making him twist and turn as much. None of them were holding him as much the way Mustafa Asal did in the World Tour Finals and Ali Farag did in this final of the World Championships. So having said all of that, let's jump into some highlights. I'm going to show you guys key highlights and share a couple of cool things that you guys can actually go practice yourselves when you get all back on the court. So here we go. This, this is the first rally of the match. And in my opinion, it foreshadows the entire game. You're going to see Farag is, he's hitting accurately number one, and then he's actively hunting for the volley. You see over here, he's getting on, he's changing the direction of the play. So sometimes you're playing on the backhand, sometimes on the forehand. He's making Shrabagi do a little bit of work. See, he's pushing him forward and backwards, being aggressive and attacking. And in my opinion, that's how Farag played the entire match. And that is the game style that actually allowed him to win. He didn't just play passive squash up and down the wall. He didn't just play long and short on one side. He held the ball, he volleyed, he met, moved Shrabagi left to right and front and back. He played different shots from the same position he did so much to make Shrabagi stutter and hold his movement before he went made Shrabagi just do work sometimes even if he knew where the, even if he knew where the ball was going just so much work went into Shrabagi and that not only has the physical effect 
but it has the mental effect as well and that leads to tins because you get this feeling that okay Farag is absorbing everything he's hitting accurately he's not making a ton of mistakes so you start to think oh my god I'm getting tired these are long hard rallies I can do this but it's it's not easy it's uncomfortable but he's used to that then you get the mental side of it being what do I have to do to win a rally and then you start getting finer and finer and then when the fatigue kicks in and you start questioning yourself mentally that's when you start going for things and then that's when you start hitting tins or making incorrect decisions and so on and so forth and you saw a little bit of that happen to Shorbagi and then at one point later in the match you could actually see the moment where he kind of physically just almost realized oh my god I don't have that much left in my in my body right now and I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight all of that in a minute so now let's jump into this next rally this rally was nine is 95 seconds long 65 shots and the guys only rested for 15 seconds and what you're going to see is Shrabagi already made one hard movement there and you're going to see Farag like these guys the movements you're seeing right now are consistent movements that these players can do all day but then every now and then they have to make this hard sprinting movement or they get stuck on the hold and then they have to turn and twist so I tried to categorize those as hard movements and in the entire 95 seconds from what I saw, Shrabagi made between three and four hard movements and Farag only made one. And then for any of you super keeners out there, I did the math. If you want to go and experience what this one rally felt like, go do ghosting for 95 seconds, hit 32, basically at a pace of about 21 to 22 shots per minute. That's how many shots you're ghosting. And out at that pace, so 21 to 22 in a minute, you are also going to try to make two to four full speed movements within the 95 second window. And that's one rally. These guys had several rallies like that in each game and a dozen or so probably, if not more, throughout the entire match. So that just goes to show you the level of fitness and strength required by these players. So as you're watching over here, it's just hard stuff in that rally right there. 95 seconds in, Farag, Shrabagi is attacking, Farag keeps retrieving, and then Shrabagi goes for this pretty tough boast. Not a bad time because Farag's momentum is going to the back left, but that's not the easiest boast. He's trying to be perfect, and it's well into the tin. They had a 15-second rest after that. And then this rally was 72 seconds long, so a minute and 12 seconds. 51 shot rally Shrabagi made five hard movements Farag made one and they rested for 28 seconds after this rally and this is all in the same game game one and there were a one or two other rallies that were very similar to this and again if you want to go ghost this 21 to 22 shots in a minute with two to two to four hard movements within the 51 shots so you see, both players are actually hitting their targets pretty well into the back of the court. Farag's on the tee, moving Shorbagi up and down. That's a nice little counter. And good reset by Farag. A little short, but is a little bit loose on that kill. That's the difference. In his previous matches, he was actually executing those kills and some of the finer shots far more accurately than he did in this match because he's getting stretched out a little bit more in this match and because there's that extra pressure from Farag retrieving everything and Farag hitting that much more accurately look at that counter by Farag and following it up with the combo great defense by Farag again changing angles pushing Shorbagi into the back little hold on the drive hard work by Shorbagi and finishing with the dead nick and see Farag knows that's a big rally because he was down two points at a critical point in the match in the first game and now he suddenly closed that to 7-8 instead of Shrabagi going up 9-6. That's huge, and he knows it. And then this is the final rally of Game 1. And Farag ends up losing this rally. Shrabagi is doing quite well with the attacks. Farag tries to do a little bit too much on that boast, but Farag knew that he put a lot of work into Shrabagi in those 17 minutes, and I don't think he was really down. Mentally, I mean. Now in game two, there was a shocking beginning because Shrabagi went up seven love and Farag was just stuck behind Shrabagi. He went back into that same pattern of play and mindset that he had in the world tour where he was passive 
and he was staying at the back. And Shrabagi was on fire. He was using two wall boasts to move Farag into the front corner and then count and then uh, play the combo, the one-two punch. He was playing straight kills. He was hitting his targets in the back on the straight drives and the cross courts. Farag kept absorbing and the rallies were long, but Shrabagi was winning all of them. So here's an example of one of those rallies. Shrabagi's up four love here. He's in front, look at that kill. Farag's absorbing, nice and tight, hard work for Farag. Hitting to the open court, Farag can't get it. Here's, now Farag got a couple of points. And then you'll notice now Farag is stepping up and actually volleying. He's not letting the ball go back. So this is that same proactive, positive squash that he played in the first game, despite losing it. And he finally picked it up after being down seven loves. He's just constantly volleying and trying to stay in front of Shrabagi. And you notice that he's not only he's not volleying a lot short, he's volleying long as well. But he's played enough short, and there's the change. Farag played enough short that when he's on the volley, he has the threat in Shrabagi's mind. Shrabagi doesn't know, okay, is he going to go short? Is he going to long, go long? Because Farag has played both options. And as a result, Shrabagi has to push up to cover the short ball, especially because Farag was hitting it accurately. And the, and the rally you just saw is a prime example of that. So because Farag is hitting those balls accurately, and he has hit them so far in the match, Shorbagi has to push up, which takes energy. And then if Farag shows the drop and then hits the drive, Shorbagi has a hard movement. He has to decelerate and then push back. So these are the kind of subtleties that really dig into the body and dig into the fitness levels. And in this game, again, at this point, Farag, as I've noted here, started not only squeezing with low hard balls, he started squeezing with height. He played different shots from the same position and his shot quality was high. Really, really tough combo to play against. And see, Farah can feel that momentum. And this was awesome. He's He caught up from being 7 love down. He's coming up to 6-8. Shrabagi's serving, so it's 8-6. And Farah just lost the previous rally, obviously because he's returning serve. But look at this over here. He nods to himself because he knows that his strategy is working. And now this was another rally where Farag is just relentless with his pressure. So watch how he's hunting, watch how he how much he volleys. And this rally was 68 seconds long, 44 shots. Shrabagi made six hard movements and Farag made about only one. So again, if you want to ghost this, ghost at a pace of 21 to 22 shots a minute, do it for 68 seconds and make anywhere between three and four five or six hard movements, full speed in that ghosting set. So see Farag's twisting and turning Shrabagi right to left, see pressure in the back. There's the hold pressure in the back again, taking him short, making him work. Shrabagi puts it in not good enough. Again, pinning Shrabagi in the back. Nice hold, making Shrabagi run all the way around. Another hold, making Shrabagi really stretch into the back, full stretch into the front. Shrabagi slips, thankfully he was okay. But that's an example of how Farag was playing. And you know, you can say amazing, Farag's playing like this. It is hard to execute this because you have to literally hit three, four, five winning shots against any other player and Shrabagi's getting them back. So mentally, you have to be so positive knowing that he's going to get the first one. He's going to get the second one. He's going to get the third one. He might even get the fourth and fifth ones. But you have to keep the ball above the tin. You have to hit the ball on the front wall and into the open parts of the court. And depending on your level, you add the holds in. You add the different kind of layers of deception and so on and so forth. But to execute is very psychologically difficult. It takes a lot of focus. So kudos to Farag for doing that. And I love this part, see, both players clapping for each other and showing that respect that they both have for one another. And here Shorbagi's breathing hard, you can see that. And Farag has that fist pump because he's now at 7-8. And now this was game ball for Shorbagi to actually go up 2-love and Farag is being super aggressive. But look at the relentlessness and effort from Shorbagi. One full diagonal, another full diagonal. <laughs> throws the racket out of Farag is smiling that just shows how he's enjoying the moment Shrabagi is working hard because he knows if he goes up to love it's it's a different situation Farag caught up and then Farag got game ball at 11 
10. This rally was another pretty tough one, a bit shorter at 26 seconds, 18 shots. And Shabagi was again being moved front to back and just being worked hard. And if you see over here, Farag's length is tight enough. There is a squeeze from being tight and then Farag gets the stroke. Shrabagi is going straight for the review, but it ended up being a stroke. Now over here, this is now into game three. And now if you remember the score in this game was far more favorable for Farag. And look at how early he's on the ball. And if you want to ghost this one, I've put the stats for you to practice the ghosting. Farag is just totally on top of it. And it takes a lot of fitness and energy to be this relentless and aggressive with your volleying because you have to be super explosive with your movements. And Farag is doing his own fair share of retrieving as well, but not as much as Sharbagi is. Ooh. Ended in the tin for Farag, but he knows that he put the work into Sharbagi. And there Sharbagi is going and toweling off. And right there, I, I showed this one because it's a sign of fatigue. So this is now at 7-5. They're in the middle of the rally. And Farag plays a drop and Shrabagi doesn't even move for it. That's a clear sign and Farag registered that. And here we go at 10-8. Well, 8-10 for Shrabagi. He gets one nice winner. Here is 9-10 for Shrabagi. You know, this is critical. Whoever goes up two games to one. That's a nice squeeze by Farag. Super soft counter. Shrabagi is doing a lot of work. Crazy flick. And Farag knows it. And Shrabagi tried so hard to get that. And Farag just knew he's gone up 2-1. And he knows he's put the hard work into Shrabagi. So he's kind of excited for the fourth. And here we go. Game number four. The fourth and final game. Farag just continued the pressure. And you'll see it over here. See, Shrabagi is attacking. But it's not quite accurate enough. Still not accurate enough. And those are all signs of fatigue. Physical and mental. And Farag is really extending the court for Shrabagi by getting on the volley, shifting him left to right, front and back. Attack by Shrabagi, nicely neutralized by Farag, and there's a diagonal for Shrabagi. Again, going for the boast when he's under pressure, not the right shot, but he's just trying to end it at that point. It's Farag's fitness is impressive, to be honest to sustain that level of aggressiveness and pace for that long is uh, it's impressive and I put the stats over here again in this rally Shrabagi made five hard movements Farag from my calculation didn't really make even one hard movement so again every rally is biased towards Shrabagi making way like there that's an example there's another example so many hard movements there's another example another one and see again Farag was just conveniently getting to the ball and what did happens it ends in a stroke championship ball Sharbagi serving 410 Sharbagi puts the attack in that's a nice tight counter Sharbagi changes angle ball comes right back in the middle of the court video referee decision Farag knows it they give the stroke and there it is and this is what I love there's so much respect and admiration for each other over here. And they have a friendship as well. Shrabagi says it afterwards. They've been friends now for about three or four years, closer friends. And I truly think Shrabagi realized that Farag played really well today. And that's what he's telling him. He's like, you know, like I literally couldn't do anything, man. You played so well today. Or, you know, he's really happy for him. It's actually a very touching moment to see two guys who have just been thrashing each other essentially be that respectful and showing that much love and the, the way i wanted to the last thing i wanted to show was this these are the, some of the quotes and this is all just off of squash site.co.uk and then the world squash champs website and shrabagi spoke first so we'll look at the bottom and the first thing he says is first of all i would like to congratulate ali and he says he's such a champ and he's the one that really inspires me to be better each day he makes me want to wake up every single day to get better He's been my main rival for three or four years now, and that's like our 13th final. I have so much respect for him. And then he congratulates him on his daughter. And then he's he's still in a jovial mood because he says, "I'm but I'm really angry at you for beating me today, but I look forward to many more big finals. Our rivalry deserved to play in one big world championship final. 
So, you know, that just shows Shravagi's mindset that it's not just about winning and losing. Obviously, he wants to win, but he sees that there's something greater than that out there. And then Farag spoke second, and he said some really beautiful things as well. He, he was grateful for his daughter. He was very grateful at the bottom towards his wife for being so supportive and considerate of everything. And he talked about the importance of mindset. He said, a couple of weeks ago at the World Tour Finals, I lost every single match. I was top seed, and I didn't win a match. I wasn't in a good way, and there's only one person I call when I'm like that, and that's Mike Way. I told him that he had to come to Chicago. I'm in big trouble, and you're the only one that gets my head in the right space. Noor is jealous because of how much I love you. So that just shows Mike Way is a phenomenal, phenomenal coach. He's a, a mentor of mine as well. I'm very grateful for that. And Mike Way is kind of like the master of mindset. So the fact that he has Ali Farag, Ali Farag has Mike Way in his corner, that's a huge, huge asset. And then in response to what Muhammad said, Ali Farag said, Muhammad, when I share a court with him, every time it's an honor. We are here, our generation, because of him. He paved the way for us and we have to keep raising our game. If he wakes up because of me, all of us wake up because of him. I'm in awe of what he does and he is the reason we are here today. So I wanted to end this video with this idea of respect, love, admiration, the importance of mindset, and just general passion for the game and the people. There is obviously confrontational and some form of rivalry and all of that, but it's not negative and adversarial. It's, it's almost like a mutual growth aspect that these guys are really honing in on. And I, and I truly respect that. And that's why they keep growing and evolving so much as players and as human beings. So there you have it, folks. There's my first analysis. If you guys want the next parts of this to break down some of the subtleties of the game, please leave a comment. Let me know how you like this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with any family or friends that you know will enjoy this or any other of the videos. I appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.